What's up, family? My name is Trail, and we have some breaking news to share with you. We have a new stimulus bill that was just released that is calling for quarterly stimulus checks to be provided to the American people. Now, we don't know how much these checks are going to be, but it is a start to get the conversation going once again. As inflation in this country is at an all-time high over the last 40 years, as well as gas prices are through the roof, it is time for a new round of federal stimulus relief aid to be offered. Also, guys, more sanctions were placed on the Russian president this week, but he actually responded to the sanctions and said that he is not even worried about any of these sanctions. All of this saying that they will not be a huge factor for Russia right now. Now, could this just be him blowing smoke or is he actually telling the truth? And last but not least, guys, hey, we also have some $1,500 stimulus checks being offered in one state. And we have a few other stories to mention as well. But as a a quick reminder guys on this channel we cover everything from what's going around the world with the stock market with the war in ukraine as well as multiple daily news stories around the world so if you're interested in any of these topics today and you want to be a part of this channel be so kind and go ahead and subscribe to it it's totally free and if you end up liking today's video then go ahead and hit that like button for us it really helps out this channel now let's go ahead and start with the video well, guys, last week we ended up hitting another, a fifth straight week of losses on the stock market as President Biden continues to say that the allies are trying to avoid World War III. Now, it says right here that the Dow booked the largest stretch of weekly losses in nearly three years and the U.S. stock market closed lower on Friday with all three major benchmarks booking another week of losses. Now, guys, the tentative opposition about the war tied to to comments that the Russian president Vladimir Putin reportedly made about the positive shifts in talks with Ukraine faded after Ukraine's foreign minister said he didn't see any progress in Russia Ukraine talks as of yet guys so the war is still going on in Ukraine right now and more than I believe 1300 Ukraine soldiers have died so far now we will continue to keep those in our prayers during this time and hope that the discussions between the Russians and the Ukrainians are able to figure out exactly what they can do in order to end this invasion on Ukraine. But so far, the Ukrainians are being powerful and they're being very strong in saying that they will continue to fight for their country until the very end. I'll keep you guys posted as usual, guys. But in other news, hey, we ended up seeing inflation in the United States hit another 40 year high this time. This happened last week, guys. The war in Ukraine could make it even worse within the coming days. Now, another inflation climbed to a new four decade high in February, reaching alarming levels even before Russian troops moved into Ukraine, sending energy prices sharply much higher. Now, the Labor Department said on Thursday that consumer prices were around 7.9% higher in February than a year ago, and prices rose by 0.8% between January and February, which is an acceleration from the month before that. But the annual inflation rate for February is the highest that we have seen since January of 1982. It does not fully reflect the recent spike in gasoline prices, but which climbed to an all-time high as of $4.31 per gallon as of this past Thursday following Russia's invasion. But anyways, prices have been surging for months now, straining consumers, pocketbooks, and putting added pressure on the Federal Reserve to clamp down on everything that's going on in this country. Now, we did hear from one consumer that was in New Mexico, and she said that, hey, we're good at stretching the minute dollars that we have right now, but we're feeling the breaking point coming soon, which she runs a coffee delivery business with her husband in New Mexico. She also said that by the time I told him to get gas, the price had already risen, which I will say, guys, I was telling myself while I was at work in the office and I said, you know what? I should have gotten gas this morning when I passed by the gas station. And then when I left work, man, gas prices had already gone up another 20 cents. So yes, guys, gasoline prices have jumped about 59 cents per gallon in just the last week, according to the AAA. Diesel prices have jumped even more sharply to nearly $5.06 per gallon. So again, guys, inflation continues to rise. And I believe that as long as this war in Ukraine continues to go up, hey, these gas prices, as well as the inflation prices on goods and services in this country will 
will also continue to rise until this war is officially over. Guys, I know you guys are struggling right now. I'm struggling. I'm sure all Americans right now are struggling in this country and especially those that are in the low to moderate income brackets. So again, we will just continue to push forward and make our money last as long as possible until this invasion is over. And then we can move on to some other things. And hopefully that the federal government will decide to put out a fourth stimulus check. We all would love to see that happen. But I do have some good news, guys. Stay until the end of this video. In other news, guys, hey, the TSA has now extended the travel mask mandate through April the 18th. Now, this is from the Transportation Security Administration is going to extend the current mandate for mask usage on public transportation and transportation hubs throughout April the 18th. Now, this mandate has been set to expire on March the 18th, but now they have extended it for another month. Now, this extension is based on the recommendations from the CDC, which was they put out a statement on Thursday and said that the CDC will work on a revised policy framework for when and under what circumstances masks should be required in public transportation corridors. Like recent guidance regarding masks and other settings, the CDC says that any revision will be based on the levels of COVID-19 at the community level, as well as on the risk of new variants, national data, and the latest science. So again, guys, we will continue to have to wear our masks at public places such as the airport, as well as flying on an airplane. But hopefully after April, April the 19th, we will no longer have to be required to put on those masks, but you are obviously still able to put on a mask as you choose. Earlier this week, guys, President Biden, as well as Europe, ended up suspending Russia's trade status, which is ratcheting up economic pain for President Vladimir Putin of Russia. This is just more sanctions being placed on the country of Russia. President Biden announced this on Friday that the U.S. will suspend normal trade relations with Russia as part of an ongoing effort to punish President Vladimir Putin for his unprovoked war in Ukraine. Putin is the aggressor and he must pay the price, Biden said in the remarks from the White House, declaring that sanctions already imposed by the West are crushing Russia's economy and warning that Moscow would pay a severe price if it deploys chemical or biological weapons in Ukraine. As the White House suggested this week, it may be plotting to do so. Now, this particular latest move is made in concert with the group of seven and the European Union, paves the way for the administration to increase tariffs on Russian imports above the levels pledged to all of World Trade Organization members. Thanking lawmakers for holding off on legislation until he could coordinate with allies. President Biden announced that each of our nations is going to take steps to deny most favored nation status to Russia, which he said will make it harder for Russia to do business with the United States. Now, in a response to that, we did get some information or a statement from the president of Ukraine, which is President Zelensky. And he tweeted that it was a substantive conversation that focused on the next steps of the the West's response to Russia. A short White House readout said that Biden highlighted how the United States is continuing to surge security, humanitarian, and economic assistance to Ukraine, as well as updated Zelensky on the latest moves, which are the sanctions being pushed down from President Biden and the United States. But Biden on Friday emphasized the importance of moving in lockstep with Europe against Russia, adding that doing it is unison with other nations that make up half of the global economy with another crushing blow to the Russian economy that has already suffered very badly from all of the sanctions that have been placed on Russia. So again, guys, we will probably see even more sanctions coming down the pipeline. Now, I don't know exactly what else the United States could put on Russia right now, but I'm sure they have something up their sleeves in case this thing continues on. And I will keep you guys posted as usual. But we did hear from Russia, guys, President Putin. He put out a statement and said, look here, guys, hey, these sanctions that you continue to put on me and my country of Moscow and Russia, hey, it has enough energy buyers already, even with all of these sanctions that you are placing on us. So 
President Vladimir Putin is sounding pretty cocky right here. He is saying that he does not care whatsoever about these sanctions being put placed on Russia right now. He says that we have enough buyers already to sustain this country thus far. And he said in this statement, guys, hey, Russia has enough buyers for its oil and gas, even as Western nations and their allies impose sanctions in response to the invasion on Ukraine. The foreign minister of Russia put out a statement and he said that we will not persuade anyone to buy our oil and gas. If they want to replace it with something else, they are fully welcome. We will have supply markets. We already have them. Now, this statement comes as Europe and single largest buyer of Russian energy is weighing the likelihood of gas supply disruptions as the war with Ukraine continues. The continent, which is dependent on Russia for about 30 percent of the gas it consumes, is trying to reduce that reliance by tapping new supplies, improving efficiency, as well as using more renewable energy. Now, they also said that Russia is fully compliant with its energy obligations in and outside of Europe. President Vladimir Putin said at a meeting with the government on Thursday, he said that we supply to our main buyers everything that we have to supply with. He said in a speech broadcast on the state Russia 24 TV, and he also said that prices there are rising, but that's not our fault. The U.S. has banned imports of Russian oil and other fossil fuels, a move that sent prices and commodities from energy to metals to grains surging. And the U.K. partially followed but stopped short of imposing a full embargo on gas imports. And other European nations, which have been grappling with the supply crunch for months now, have been reluctant to take similar steps. Instead, oil traders and companies have been self-sanctioning and even quitting their operations in in Russia entirely. But again, guys, Russia says that, hey, we don't need to care about any of these sanctions because we have enough customers and buyers to be able to provide enough money and billions of dollars for the country of Russia. So guys, if this is true, hey, I don't know how much damage the United States is putting these sanctions will affect Russia if this information is true. But if we go by what Russia stands for in past history, we know that we cannot trust them because the information that they put out for everyone else to know, we end up finding that that was all false. So guys, I will keep you guys posted. But hey, on to some stimulus update news, guys. Hey, we do have a bit of good information right here because last week, guys, the Democrats unveiled a new stimulus plan to issue quarterly checks to Americans by taxing oil companies that are continuing to post huge profit. Now, this is just another move from the Democratic Party in which we all know that they insist that a fourth stimulus check need to be provided to the American people, which on the other hand, GOP leaders have also stated that the American people do not need any more stimulus relief aid. So again, guys, here it says that Democrats rolled out a plan to issue some quarterly stimulus checks to Americans. The bigger thing is that this is going to save everyone even more money. Now, this proposal will face a steep odds for passage given the GOP resistance. But guys, the Democrats introduced this bill on Thursday to tax the largest oil companies which are recording their biggest profits in years and use that money to provide quarterly checks to Americans that are facing sticker shock just about everywhere that you look. Now, this piece of legislation would apply only to large firms like ExxonMobil that produce or import over 300,000 oil barrels per day and exempt smaller companies. Now, the 50% tax would impose on the difference between the current price of barrel and the average price between 2015 and 2019. Now, Representative Kohona of California, as well as Senator Sheldon Whitehouse of Rhode Island, are the bill's main sponsors. Co-sponsors include Senators Bernie Sanders of Vermont, as well as Elizabeth Warren and Michael Bennett of Colorado, as well as Sherrod Brown of Ohio. Now, this particular plan would also establish a quarterly payment program to provide direct payments to Americans that are struggling with the rising prices. Now, the income thresholds in the bill are similar to those of the third stimulus check, which was issued last year. Individuals tax filers making under $75,000 a year and couples making $150,000 per year would receive these particular quarterly stimulus payments. At $120 a barrel, single filers would receive $240 
$40 per year and joint filers would get $360. This is some amazing news guys because we have another, finally another stimulus bill on the table. Now whether or not this bill will actually reach the Senate and the House, we don't know yet guys, but it is a step in the right direction. The bigger thing is that this is going to save everyone money, said Kahana said in an interview. If you're big oil and you look at this, you're not going to want to pay this particular tax. And so you're going to be willing to lower your gas prices, which is a strategy by the Democrats, I must say. Now, this plan faces long odds to become law as Republicans are opposed to tax hikes and centrist Democrats may balk at the measure as well. A spokesperson for Senator Joe Manchin office didn't even immediately respond to the request for a comment on this new stimulus bill by the Democrats. But hopefully, guys, we should hear more information about this bill and how many people actually will be willing to support this bill. We should hear something in regards to that this week, guys. I will keep you guys posted as we receive more information. And last but not least, guys, hey, we do have another article that's talking about some workers are going to see $1,500 stimulus payments. Now it says right here, employees located in one California county will soon see payments worth up to $1,500 in stimulus hazard pay if they were essential workers for this particular county. Now it says that this is happening in Sacramento County where everyone who was an essential worker working at the peak of the pandemic can actually qualify for these $1,500 payments. Now there are two different ways that people will see this hazard pay. Now one payment would go out this fiscal year and another would go out the next fiscal year which starts on July the 1st and the number of hours you worked will determine if you get one or two installments installments of these $1,500 stimulus payment. Now it says that in order to get the first installment of the stimulus cash, you need to have worked at least 120 hours in person for a county between March the 5th of 2020 and March the 8th of 2022. And anyone that worked an additional 120 hours between March the 5th and Mar May the 1st will get the second installment. Now if you don't want the installments, you can instead get 40 hours of administrative time off. Now, the first payment is set to go out on April the 7th of 2022. Anyone who worked remotely does not qualify for these stimulus payments. Essential workers are health care, public health and safety, child care, education, sanitization, transportation and food production, as well as services workers. So again, guys, hey, this is another form of stimulus payments that are going out to individuals in the state of California. If you were considered an essential worker. Guys, I will include a link to this article so that you can read over to figure out whether or not you could qualify for these $1,500 stimulus payments. But again, guys, hey, I hope you enjoyed all of this information in this video today. Well guys, hey, that's all I have for you today. Now, if you enjoyed this type of content and you wanna see more, hey, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. And if you like this video, then go ahead and hit that like button for us. It really helps out this channel as well as it tells YouTube to share this video with others. But anyways, guys, hey, I appreciate you guys stopping by and watching and I hope to see you on the next video.